OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're excited about our EL Civics support channels, and I hope that you find enough information in this session to benefit you and your program. We also hope there are four people. So if you tell 10 people about the channels and the presentation, we'll have a good start today, correct? So uh, I'm, I have Lori Howard and Portia LaFerla. They're all, we, we are all program specialists for CASAS and have all collaborated to put these presentations online. The goals for the presentation today are, first of all, to, to tell you what the purpose of our channels are, to tell you about the organization of the channels, how to access them, how to subscribe. Subscribe has become very important. And, and uh, uh, Anthony Burke was saying they're really close to, a th to their thousand subscribers. Well, I think we at this point have like 50. So there's a lot of work to do for our subscriptions to, be, to kick in. We want to show you how to find specific information if you have a question about EO civics or citizenship or IET. We want, we want to show you how to find that information on these channels and then become familiar with the content. There's a lot of content there to share with you. Uh, at the end of the presentation, what I would like from you is your input regarding future the future content we need, and the dissemination. We used to have EL Civics conferences throughout the state. And we all had a lot of fun attending those conferences. Um, usually within about four different set uh, areas in California, we just, we'd show up with about 25 presentations that were divided up in strands for administrators, teachers, teachers of EL civics, teachers of IET, teachers of citizenship. And um, so this, these channels are based on that same type of strand, in for, strand concept. We have in, in a YouTube channel, strands can be set up as sections that scroll down the page. So we'll show you, we want you to be familiar with those sections for our channels. The EL Civics channel, support channel, um, has eight separate sections. The citizenship preparation channel has five. The eight channels in, in EL Civic support our implementation, all the information you need to start a program or specific information that you need while you're running a program. There is a strand for IET, Integrated Education and Training, a strand for TOPS Pro topics that relate to EL Civics, a strand for instructional support and resources, which is really good for teachers. Then we have uh, a strand where our most recent EL Civics meetings, and Lori's gonna talk to that subject in a little while, uh, are housed. Uh, we have a strand for EL Civics Exchange, one for agency implementation examples, which may be really important to the field. How did someone else tackle this problem? And then uh, agents, then Publishers Corner. Uh, I always loved roaming around the publishers during conferences that I attended, finding out if there was anything new that I, we could use or implement. So we've asked the publishers to participate in this, in this setting of channels. The five sections in citizenship are implementation, Assessment topics, there are several different tests that citizenship preparation programs use, and sometimes 
we get those confused of what they're used for and how they're implemented, et cetera. And actually, Portia does a lot of, talk, of explaining about the assessment topics. Um, then we have a TOPS Pro piece because you have to use TOPS Pro if you're going to get paid. You have to get your classes in correctly and, and your progress in correctly. And uh, then an instructional support resource and a publisher's corner. Just for information, Lori, do you see in the upper right, I put in the flag. I hope we have permission to do this. We do have permission, and I want to talk to you about that a little bit more later, but great, good for you. Thank you for doing that. A student drew this, a citizenship student, and it's beautiful. So we want we want to get that student's name and get it on this, on this flag and uh, use it as an example of what the U.S means to people trying to get their citizenship. So our next item was to access the channels and access is very easy. If you if you know www.casas.org, you get to the home page and on that home page there's a section called what's new and down most of most of the way down that channel you have the link to the EL Civics Support Channel and the link to the Citizenship Preparation Channel. If in the future that disappears, there is another way to get to the channels and that is still from the homepage to go over to the welcome area. Welcome to CASAS, Peer Communities, California EL Civics. When you click on that, you see this. You're on the training and support and down on the left hand, the bottom so section, you see EL Civic Support Channel and Citizenship Preparation Support. Okay. So again, we're uh, trying to say, please sub subscribe. And I'm in the middle of this. Go away, Lynn. There. <laughs> so, I, I moved me. So when you press the subscribe button, I think a lot of people are trying to do that, but they don't know that they have to sign up to be, to have a, a YouTube account. The Google account you have, if you have Gmail, you already have a Google account and you can use that to process. But when you, when you subscribe to the channel, you're gonna see uh, these various choices all personalized and none. If you click on all, then you will, every time we upload a new presentation, you will be, I, you will be notified. So that's helpful, I believe. Uh, I quickly, uh, and I'll get myself out of the way again or back to where I was. I like moving myself around like this. Um, there are various ways to become a YouTube member. Uh, I don't know if you call it member or subscriber, I guess, but you go to YouTube at the top right on your computer, you'll see sign in. If you don't have a sign in, you'll see click uh, create account and you process that way. I'm not going to, there's also explanations for how to do this on your Android phone or on your iPhone or tablet. And I'm just going to show you that they're there. I am not going to uh, talk about them, but if you want the specific information, my email lrobinson at casas.org, I'd be glad to send it to you. Okay, I am going to move now and go directly into, and I guess I have to share it differently. So I go down and share my basics. Screen two, turn this off. Nope, I don't want to leave the meeting. Um, hmm. Oh, one step, I didn't, I didn't hit share. I'm going to move directly into our channels. 
And as I process through, you'll see I'm opening up a tab that has a link to the homepage, CASA's homepage. And as my homepage comes up, you see it, right? Yes? Yes. I see what's new and I just scroll down and I'm gonna start with the EL Civic Support Channel. I click on that. It takes me to the channel. You won't see these items because- Welcome to the California- and once you subscribe, you don't have to hear my raspy voice saying welcome anymore. Um, but that's just a, a little overview of how to use the channel. What you will see now are the strands. This first strand implementation, second strand IET, et cetera. I'm just going to go quickly down because I'm going to look at each one of these strands and talk about the videos that are there now. So go back to the top. And the first presentation here is the California EL Civics Basic, Civic Participation in IELCEIET. And Lori is going to talk to that. Lori, would you like me to open it and oh, no. go to the information? Not, not necessarily. I, I, I was thinking just, I mean, you can start there. Yes, just to say that these are the basic requirements for EL Civics. If you are new to EL Civics or you want a refresher, this is a really great presentation for you to um, work on. You can notice here that Lynn has encouraged us to put time codes. So if there's anything you want to look up, you could just look at the time codes there and jump to that place. So maybe you've forgotten some uh, fact or some information. And so rather than listen to the whole 90 minutes, you can jump to the time code for the information you want. So that's a real plus for um, these, uh, uh, these posts, uh, these videos for the support channel. Do you want to go back to the other, uh, to the front? just so we can see the other ones. So the other ones in this section are really about requirements. So selecting co-ops, if you have never selected co-ops before, uh, if you're a new EL Civics coordinator, you would probably want to look at that one. If you want more information, uh, uh, understanding and implementing co-ops, that's more, again, it's sort of a continuation of the EL Civics basics uh, civic participation requirements. Um, and that one just goes into more detail about uh, what co-ops are and how to select them. I'm showing that they also, that what we've tried to do is that if anything's over 45 minutes, we've tried to make sure that there are time codes because you're busy. You don't have time to listen to 45 minutes if all you wanna know is uh, how you revise the co-ops. And the, the revision section starts about an hour in to the presentation. Okay, Lori, I'm sorry. I'll go back. No worries. Now. And then Lynn, just to clarification, can you hit, can you click on that number to jump directly to it? Or do you just need you just uh, yes, click on the number. Uh, let's just choose one. Developing that's really one. important that you wouldn't have to find it yourself, but it just goes right there. That's a really good feature of these numbers that we have. So there you okay. are. You see, I clicked on uh, assessment development, co-op assessment development, and it takes me right to the place where that is being discussed. That is so spectacular. That's a great feature of this. So the, uh, the other things we have remote testing and then uh, a more specific co-op development uh, webinar, how you can develop an assessment plan. Uh, do you want me to go on and co uh, continue with these, Lynn? If you would like, um, so, so you, because you had a lot to do in present in the in IETs, did you want to go on to IET or yeah. do you want to look at this one? But no. I just want to mention this one, this EL Civics, I'm going to, I'm going to go click okay, on it. Okay, feel free. I'm going to click on it because I just think it's good. If Grammarly does more than can. We do get advertisements once in a while. Not always. But you see, I went to show show more, and then I that was un, it was underneath. It will show up here, and again, I have 
agenda and time codes. So if I want to know about this one, I have to would have to listen to about 20 times. The, Batch of errors. The, the rubric. With oh. Grammarly, you can oh, find. Oh, it made me go back. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about resources. When, when, when Lori starts talking about rubrics, I'd probably play this about ten times. <laughs> so, that, that this is a real learning tool. I hope that's what we're looking for. I'm sorry, Lori. No, I just think it's so spectacular that you can look something up and find the thing you're looking for. It's really great. So, okay. um, the next section is is IET IELCE, and again. Uh, those of you who are thinking about uh, who have IELCE programs or are thinking about applying for the uh, we owe a two grant as it comes out uh, for application this August, uh, it'd be good to look at this. So that first um, workshop planning and implementing a new IELCE program gives you step by step instructions on how you would uh, start a new program or uh, if you already have programs, you might look at that one to see what steps you might not be emphasizing that might be helpful to you. So maybe you did all the steps, but then you for, forgot or one step went by the wayside. You might want to look at that again. An important component of a, an IELCE plan or IELCE program is the next one, developing a single set of learning objectives. That's really a crucial component. And so this uh, video goes in depth about how to do that. Um, May I butt in right here? Yes. Because a single set of learning objectives is a big part of the report that you will do for your IET uh, program. And it has been difficult for many agencies to do that. So this is a great program and it also has a, an agenda and time codes so that you can go in and find out some specific information that you may have forgotten. But I'm leading into last year, we had a video, video on how to complete that report. And we took it down because we're not, we weren't at that point very sure what was going to happen for this year. But Lori, uh, it, correct me, you will be well, doing a new video and it will appear right here. Yes, I'm hoping to do that. I'm waiting for the plan, uh, the electronic plan to be uh, finalized. Uh, if nothing else, we'll be talking about it at the next EO Civics meeting and going through the steps. I, as, but as soon as the um, uh, electronic plan is available, then I will uh, have a, make a short video and we'll post it right there, yes. Good. And, and so I'm, I'm also leading into keep keep up with this this uh, these channels because when you need new specific information about any part of WIOA two IET or citizenship prep, we hope that we'll be getting instruction on these uh, in these segments for you uh, at that point. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lori. No, and just to say that then you get when anything new is put up, then people get notified if they're subscribers, right? So that's Correct. a really great benefit yeah. of, yes. of that. And we're going to try to keep it updated with our regional meetings to tell you about it in regional meetings, but not everyone, teachers don't get to go to regional meetings. So uh, subscribe. So the, 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 the last three there are... Um, presentations from agencies, model programs, programs who have already implemented their ILCE, IET programs and are doing a good job with it. And so each of those videos, uh, how, what we learned, oh no, I'm sorry, it's the last two, um, uh, models for preparing uh, uh, adult English learners, uh, both of those um, would be models and uh, what agencies learned. And so we're going to be adding to those as well because uh, every year we have new people presenting. And so it's just really great to hear from practitioners and how their programs are running. Uh, they tell you the challenges, the successes, uh, you know, and, and what's going on with that. Um, the, okay. uh, yeah. I want to go, I would like to go back to this presentation. Okay, good. Uh, is which is, Workforce Development Board discussion. IET programs that run IETs are asked to collaborate 
with their with their workforce development boards and some of us don't really know how to do that and so this presentation i think is outstanding uh i'm going to show you the agenda this was with uh, steve thompson set this up and and did it during one of his regional meetings but he asked for the help from the uh, Ventura Workforce Development Board. And I'm trying to go, oh, Norman, Norman Albanes was the presenter here. And you can see he talked about memorandum of understanding requirements and how the Job Corps centers participate. Specific information that's very valuable to those folks that are running an IET program. Um, the last, the first half of that was Norman. The last half is what Lori was talking about because several providers, several of our programs for IET were able to share what they were doing and how they were interacting with their workforce development boards. Okay, I think we've covered IET. Lori, did, was there something we missed? I wanted to show you, do you see, uh, just, you may, you may or may not know some, my, whatever a screen will hold, sometimes a screen will only show three of these presentations. If there's an arrow, that means there's more. So you click on the arrow. All right, let's go on to Tops Pro. Do you wanna talk about that, Lynn? I could talk about that. Um, we have three presentations that relate specifically to TOPS Pro. The first one was done by uh, Margaret Teske. And what I might do just for fun is let Margaret tell you. Which is part of TE where this. you link your co op selection. Oh, 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 Margaret, I let you go way too far. Let's go to about 30 and let Margaret tell you about this. Oh. We'll talk today about um, how to ensure that your TOPS Pro TE software is accurately reflecting your agency's EL Civics funding. We have three different kinds of EL Civics funding. We have civic participation known as 231 citizenship also known as 231 and then integrated el civics ielce which is known also as section 243. we want to make sure uh, that your te is noting all your el civics in summary and detail reports which i'll show you and that it's capturing all your el civics outcomes for payment points this is so Margaret just now told you what this presentation is all about. I'm going to go back to the next presentation in this area. And this one was done at Casa Summer Institute. We aren't ashamed to steal presentations for these channels. Uh, Summer Institute is a, a provider of a lot of great training, but you all didn't get to go. So some of these have been pulled from the this last summer's presentation this particular one i'm trying to stop it oh it's it wants to load but i don't want it to start oh good so this particular presentation was given by martha perez and several other folks from the field that assisted her but I think the information is incredibly valuable. And you can go to the time codes to find out how to manipulate your data in TOPS Pro. So you, you, she talked about, she told you how to put in class definitions, class instances, ES, EL Civics focus areas, which got confusing for a while. Because Lori, can you just name the, what were the focus areas of EL Civics? So there are three focus areas: uh, civic participation, um, citizenship preparation, and IELCE, the workforce. 
and you have to de designate your classes by what they're going to teach so that you can get the proper information in so that you can get the payment and the payment points, the payment amounts are a little different for each of those. So it's very important that you click on the El Civics Focus Series and, and make sure you have the information right. This, this presentation talked about coding the classes, selecting the co-ops, and actually we had, we have a specific presentation earlier about selecting co-ops, co importing co-ops into TE, et cetera. So, this is, I think, a, a valuable help. And when something changes, we intend to make changes to the video so that you get the latest, the best information possible when you go to these channels. The last one was presented by a gentleman named Gilbert Leos from, from uh, Pasadena Adult School. And he figured out how to upload results using third party wizard. And I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not the techie, but for technical people, we hope we we hope that we have valid information for the people that work, that your staff that works with the technical issues for uh, EL Civics and puts information into Tops Pro. So those folks will find Gilbert's presentation valuable. I'm going down now to the instructional support resources section. The first of those presentations is by someone who, when she used to present at a in-person conference, her classrooms were always packed. And that's Susan Gear. And she developed this presentation actually the, in the middle end of last year to talk about how to engage students in remote learning. We were all struggling with that. She has a lot of good ideas. She, she tries, she, her statement is she wants to show you how to make this new normal, which was COVID, a fun and engaging learning environment. So that sounds like a great presentation for teachers. The next one uh, is actually brand new. I just put this uh, on recently, and it's uh, another presenter that was very popular at our in-person, Donna, Donna Price, and she worked with um, Ventures Company. What's the company? Cambridge. Cambridge, okay. Uh, and she is giving a practical ways to, to put workplace readiness training into ESL. So uh, that's a great presentation and it's, it's new. So not many people know about it yet. This one um, is a presentation made by Rob Jenkins. He wrote Standout and um, what's our, how's our time? I, I was going to let you listen to Rob a minute, but I think we'll skip that, go back and see what he says about how he wants, he is presenting this training. Lynn, Lori? it's 1047. Um, you have about an hour, so you have plenty of time. Okay. Well, we said we were going to only take an hour, but uh, you know how that goes. <laughs> okay. Recent uh, California network meetings. Lori? Yeah, I'm so thrilled that we have this resource. I, I always send the recording to uh, network uh, participants, but I don't have everybody's email. So it's so great that we can uh, post these here. And without having to get an email from me, uh, the meetings are here. And so that's just a real boon if you miss the meeting, uh, uh, which happens uh, once a month. At, at a one o'clock to 2.30 time. And if that's not a good time for you, then the recordings will be posted here. And we're going to have all of them. And then, uh, you know, we'll start deleting the, the older ones one by one. But uh, uh, every month you can find the meeting here within a day or so of uh, the meeting happening. So that's really great. And we'll probably keep three to five up, the three to five last months up and running. But I wanted to show you the most recent one, uh, the time codes are here. You may have been at the meeting, but forgot what 
Lori said about immigrant tax filing questions. And you have your information right here to go back to. You don't have to listen to an hour, hour and a half presentation. But there's incredible pieces of information presented by Lori every month, relevant, time sensitive, and you can go right here without listening to the whole thing and find the information that you're looking for. Does this sound like an advertisement? You're doing a good job, Lynn, of that, of convincing <laughs> people to use it. That's what I'm trying to do. Advertise away, Lynn. Yes, that's what we want to do. Uh, Lori, I'm going to let you talk about the exchange. Sure. So the Yale Civics Exchange is a, is a um, system that was uh, developed by both OTAN and CASAS, supported by the California Department of Education, to offer instructional resources for uh, civic participation in IELCE instruction. And so um, the second one here, EL Civics Exchange, well, uh, well, all of these talk about the EL Civics Exchange. We want people to submit materials and we want you to be able to access materials. And we're uh, periodically putting up new materials for you to access. Um, we're hoping to have a, an uh, overview uh, video. Uh, I don't see that one here, or is that, um, I think, I guess it's over to the right, the introduction to the website, it's the very far one. Yes, uh, that one, this thank one? you, Lynn. Okay. So that's, I'm pretty sure that's an overview to the Yale Civics Exchange if you want to learn more about it. Uh, Anthony Burek, Netta uh, Anasari, uh, myself and uh, Margaret Teske, I think were the presenters for this uh, last year at the Casa Summer Institute. So that's the overall, you know, what is the Yale Civics Exchange? And then the other ones to the left uh, talked about submitting to the exchange, how to do that, just a very short video on how to do that, how to make your materials accessible. That's the first one that Lynn's pointing to now, because um, one of the requirements of, of OTAN and of the Department of Ed is when we post things, they need to be accessible. So we're trying to help uh, instructors and uh, curriculum coordinators as you're developing your materials to make them accessible um, as you create them. And so this uh, presentation by Penny Pearson and David Espinosa uh, can really show you exactly how to do that. Um, They've also developed a, a tip sheet about how, how to do that, and that's uh, on the you know, Civics Exchange page. Um, there's a presentation on uh, checking PowerPoints for accessibility. That one would be next. And then, Lynn, is there something else to the right here? Uh, I think that's so. This, hmm, well, that's the last one. The okay, great. Licensing, right? Great. There's six of those, and they're pretty specific. Uh, you know, some of them are for Word documents, how to make Word documents and PDFs accessible. One is how to make PowerPoints accessible, et cetera. And that's a good one, by the way. It's Jane. All right. And do you want to talk about the next, the next uh, list? The next list, the agency implementation examples. And this is a variety. It's a variety of different agencies tackling a problem that is in the realm of EL Civics and IET. The first two are telling uh, people how they accomplished remote testing of co-ops, both of them. The first one is Marcy English, in England, excuse me, Marcy England from Corona no Norco. The next one is Rita Van Dykow from, um, hmm. Santa, not Santa Ana, the other college they run. Uh, Rancho Santiago? Santiago Canyon. Santiago, Santiago yeah. Canyon College. So those are the, the first two. The third one, it was a lesson, and actually it was within one of the network meetings. But Lori, you want to talk about that? It, it was a presentation by Carla from LAUSD, I believe. Oh, yes. She was... Um, uh, actually showing her materials about media literacy for co-op. Uh, 27.7. 27. 27.7, thank you. It was a task four. And so uh, she was showing us her materials and those materials are posted on the Yale Civics Exchange. So she talks about it here and then you can go to the Yale Civics Exchange and find those materials. Fantastic. 
The last one was an IET related session. It was a session where uh, Victoria Abete from hmm, from uh, Mount Contra Diablo, Costa, Mount Diablo, Contra Costa County. She was explaining how her agency interfaced with the Workforce Development Board. So these are ex examples from the field, finding out what your neighbors are doing. One thing that um, is missing from, from this idea of a channel, support channel, is the ability to interact with people from other agencies at an in-person conference. Uh, that's probably one of the most valuable things people can do. And um, so this is our attempt to let you know what your neighbors are doing in this segment. And finally, the publisher's corner. Um, we've had, there are, in fact, there, I put up a publisher's corner uh, from Cambridge just last night, late, it got in, uh, and it's, it's called On Time, Optimizing EL Civics uh, Proficiency. Uh, Jen LaSalle from, uh, Cambridge created a very, very uh, compelling uh, presentation of her material, of the materials that Cambridge is offering for, for EO Civics. The next one, the next two, in fact, were done by Burlington. Burlington did a whole session on how to use their materials for, for EO Civics 231, and then another section, another video for how to use their materials for 243 IET, Inter uh, Integrated Education and Training. The last two, actually, I put them under instructional and I left them here. I don't know if I should do that or not. We'll figure that out later. But because they are presentations that are using publishers' materials, but they are telling us how to integrate them into the classroom. So they may disappear from this segment and go into the next. I'm going and before to we leave this section, can yes. we go back up to the IELCE uh, section? Because I realized I'd like to go to the, uh, to the right, the models one, because I'd like to just click on that just to see, so you can see here, um, maybe uh, click on the, the see more for that one so you, we can see which okay, topics. There, yes, there that are, one. Okay, there are two, okay. There are two models presentations. And uh, so the first one uh, in the show model. Oh, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have, don't have it. it, okay. Um, we don't, for the models presentation. Okay, but we do have, so one of them is about early childhood education. Oh. And, and then uh, Paige Endo talks about healthcare. So I, I just wanted to, and then there's a, a, the Elaine Weber's talking about um, how to uh, work with your community to um, uh, uh, find out what employment needs are in the community so that you can plan your IELCE and workforce training programs based on what's in the community. Uh, can you go over to the right? And I'll, I think I remember too what, what the next one would be. Um, I'm sorry, the other direction. We only have you. you oh, that's the all two there models. There's two models. There you go. That one. Two models. Uh huh. The second model. Yeah. Um, and Lori, uh, you just brought up a need here. We need a description for these. Yeah. So Let me just see what if you can just show me the first slide. I can tell you what. So we have Drew Gamet um, uh, is another administrator, and he was talking about social media and how to use social media to. Um, uh, advertise your programs so that you can get more students. So that's a really great presentation. And then you have one about custodial and one about uh, personal care aids. So I just want, I just realized that I was remiss in not telling you what kind of models you would be seeing there. Uh, and so again, we're going to be adding to this. So there'll be more and more models added to your uh, list here so that you can have more information about how agencies implement their 243 IELCE IET programs. And with Lori's help, I will input a description of each of these so you can immediately see them 
uh, and perhaps we'll do, we should do time codes for okay, each Okay, so uh, well, I'll take care of the time codes for you. Thank you. All Thank right, you, I am going to leave EL Civics support channel. And I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to go to my CASAS homepage. Computers always seem slow when you're in a hurry. And I'm going to go down <coughs> to what's new and go to the citizenship preparation support. And our citizenship program specialist is with us, Portia. And I'm going to let you just start talking and tell me where you want me to jump in. And uh, especially under Portia has, has done a lot of work in putting information into these channels. I'll jump in uh, at, at other at times, but could you start with the preparation implementation? Talk about your two videos. Of course, and Lynn, please jump in anytime. So as Lynn said on the citizenship preparation channel, there are five areas and um, there's been really kind of an uptick in interest in citizenship lately. I think part of it is um, the new administration trying to clear a backlog of citizenship applications, but we're also hearing talk about new funding that may include um, path to citizenship for essential workers. So um, there's just been more interest. So I'm really happy that we were able to put this information here for everybody to easily access. And in, in the first section, the implementation, there are two videos. The first one is the basics. So it's a general overview of citizenship preparation under WIOA. It's pretty short, about 15 minutes. It's good for somebody who just wants a general orientation to um, how to offer a citizenship program under WIOA 2 in California. Whereas the second one, the full version, is much more detailed. It has um, more screenshots, more um, specific information about creating classes and earning payment points, because as not everybody knows, there are two payment points available under citizenship preparation that are separate from all of the other EL civics and learning gains um, payment points. So there's some very specific information about, about the tests and um, how to go about offering those and gaining the payment points. There's a section on um, remote testing as well. There is um, uh, information about certification and recertification. And this particular video is time stamped. So um, if you go into that, that video, you can just pick the area that you need to look at. If you want me to show it, let me know. If you'd like to, then just very briefly, you can just show where the stamps are. So here it is. Yeah. Remote testing options or welcome to the CASA citizenship preparation oh, YouTube. Thank, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate your thanks so much. <laughs> Join us there. Okay. So the second one is the second the session. session. Yeah, are the assessment topics. And right now there are three videos in there. And one of them is the first one is um, it's an overview of the CASAS tests. There are two very specific tests for citizenship, plus the reading for citizen, citizenship test, which can be used for pre-post learning gains. And it talks about the pros and cons of using that. Um, and then it introduces the citizenship interview test, which is a one-on-one -on -one oral interview that can be used to, uh, to uh, evaluate whether students are ready for the USCIS interview. And there is a payment point that agencies can earn for that within a citizenship prep program. And the other one is the government and history, which is a um, listening test of general knowledge of um, US history and government. And uh, the second one is specifically about the citizenship interview test. And in order to give that one, you need to be certified and you need to recertify each year. So that gives all of the details about offering that test, how to certify, how to recertify. And um, one of the things that it includes is how to order the training, which is a little bit glitchy on the website because the website is used for all kinds of training, um, uh, training, training orders. 
This one, California, we owe it to agencies don't have to pay for, but you have to get into a second screen before you know how to do that. So people get very um, nervous. And so that kind of walks you through that process so that you can easily register without panicking. The uh, third, just could you I'll talk speak, about that third one? Do you want to talk I'll about I'll speak that? to the third one. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Gagliardi, uh, did this presentation at the Summer Institute last year. And actually she's working care closely with us and she's reviewing this right now. If, if there's information that needs to be changed, she will be redoing it. So uh, we're, we're very, very fortunate to have Jennifer willing to do these presentations. Yes, and in that one, she digs much deeper into the specific um, kinds of things that students need to know, the test content, um, what kinds of information they're responsible for. Um, and so it's a, it's a much more detailed um, look at citizenship preparation from an instructional point of view. Okay, we'll go on to Tufts Pro. So this one is kind of a subset of what you saw Margaret Teske's video on setting up classes. This one is specifically for citizenship preparation, and it tells you how to um, how to uh, create the class in Tops Enterprise and properly market for um, for the uh, focus of citizenship preparation. The next, I'm going to add one more in this area, and it will be how to. Um, input tests into um, TOPS Inter Enterprise. So if you've offered a citizenship interview test, I'm going to put in just the specifics for how to easily input that into TOPS Enterprise. Good. The next section uh, is instructional resources or support. And I try to put the latest presentation at the, fr at the front, and you can notice that I've tried to do that. Uh, and just yesterday or day before yesterday, uh, Jennifer Gagliardi had put, had done a presentation called a deep dive in the Summer Institute, but she went through it and said, well, it's not all relevant right now. So she read, she did a new one. And that's uh, the one that you see right here. It's only been uh, up for one day. So Jennifer has incredible materials. The next one is USA Learns uh, Citizenship. It's a free online course. The presentation is done by Andrea Willis of Sacramento County Office of Education. It's, it's a very good program. And interestingly enough, that uh, organization is going to do a present going to do a program for uh, careers for healthcare careers. And uh, we hope to get a video from them on that. It'll go back into the IET field civics program, but uh, what access US learn, USA learns. The next one is another uh, Jennifer presentation resources for US citizenship that she did for us last year. We'll probably see a revision for this. The last one is one that I think the title um, confused people a little bit because if you don't know what Hoots is, it's a program where you can create games for help your students learn. And Dr. Patricia Hernandez did this presentation and it is, um, she talks about gaming platforms and the ease, ease of game creation and then online assessment with games. So it's a very valuable presentation that uh, we need to help people understand what they would be learning from that presentation. And then Publishers Corner, we have two publishers that have submitted um, information, both of them quite recently. Let me... The first one uh, is Burlington and interesting, and this just, these have just been posted within the last week. This first one is uh, from Burlington and it's Robert Breitbart. I think he's, he seems to be the spokesperson for Burlington and he sent an incredible presentation of what they have available for citizenship success. What I learned 
even more from his presentation is how to create video presentations. So if, if you're doing video presentations, uh, watch this and, and we can learn from these both of these publishers. Actually, they're very well put together. Burlington uh, Cambridge just submitted their presentation. I, I just got it online last night, actually. Uh, but it, it's it's well done and really shows us how we should be presenting by video. Okay, that is the end of our piece.